रट्टा मार लिया हमने यही सुबोध है रट्टा मार लिया उसको धान के मुंह मत खींचे अच्छा नहीं फोटो मत खींचो खाली रिकॉर्ड कर बाकी यहाँ पर सभी उपस्थित वैष्णव वैष्णव जन के चरणों में यथा मैं तो नवाद प्रणाम सौ दिवसों हेयर आज हमारे घर में पधारे सतदेव गुरुदेव के हम तो माय हाउस हम इसके लाइक नहीं थे पर गुरुदेव ने हमें ऐसा समझा हमारे घर आए उसके लिए मेरे पास धन्यवाद शुक्र हम सो ग्रेटफुल बहुत बहुत गुरुदेव के हम तो माय हाउस इसके लिए गुरुदेव को मैं पूरे जीवन भर भी I cannot in my whole life. I cannot give anything to my Guru Dev. And all the Vaishnavas came to my house. Put, they are purifying my house. So I just pray that Thakur Ji and Guru Dev can give mercy. That Guru Dev keeps giving mercy. हमारे घर है गुरुदेव की कृपा तो है जाने जाने जब हम गुरुदेव से नहीं मिले उसके पहले से ही कृपा बनी हुई है इवन बिफोर मीटिंग गुरुदेव हिज मर्सी वाज अपॉन अस मेरे को जब मॉर्निंग में उठी तभी वो इस दिन द मॉर्निंग शबन न दिन द मॉर्निंग शी टोल्ड गुरुदेव मदर आई हैड वन डॉटर वन वन ड्रीम व्हाट डू यू हैव ड्रीम ऑफ ओ मामा इन गुरुदेव एंड परम गुरुदेव शबन बच्चे तो मेरे में है They were coming to our house I, and they were sitting on my bed. I had this dream and he was giving Hari Katha. Shaman Prabhuji was doing Hari Telecast. And I can't tell you, I saw so many people in our house. I had this dream. So his daughter had this dream yesterday. Okay, what Gurudev was talking about? About Sundaran Goswami Maharaj, she told me. And after two hours, Akhilesh Prabhu calls us. Ah, Guru Dev is coming to your house. So I, so I, mean, I was so surprised. Wow, Guru Dev Thakur Ji gave us this opportunity. I'm so much, so much, so much, so much. I'm not qualified at all. Guru Dev accepts me as yours. Please keep me as yours. हमारे बच्चे हमारे परिवार जो भी हमारी फैमिली अभी नहीं जुड़े हैं वो सभी भी जुड़े हैं गुरुदेव कोई बात नहीं इंग्लिश इज ओके Everybody understands English. My class? The, no. Okay, like, the light has stopped. I don't know why it's stopped. Yes. Yeah. The light has stopped. First of all, I would like to pay my kuti kuti dandavat pranam to my beloved Guru Dev, Nitya Lila Pra Nitya Lila Pravista Hom Vishnu Pada Shudra Sata Shishi Mat Bhakti Vedanta Narayana Swami Maharaj, and my dear Siksha Guru Shishi Mat Bhakti Vedanta Vanagu Swami Maharaj and Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhu Pada, and please accept my. Humble obeisances to all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis who are present here. Actually, I'm not even sure what to speak today, but um, I was just speaking to Didi in the kitchen, and uh, it's such a 
I would like to say firstly thank you so much for inviting Gurudev and inviting us also to your very sweet home and your sweet family. Like Prabhuji said, it's a very great fortune when a Vaishnav comes to your house, a pure devotee. Like Guru, this this is a special time for us because we've been doing like our centennial, our centennial hundred years of our Guru Dev. So it's been such a great time, and uh, now we are just uh, we have been um, glorifying our Guru Dev. Like one of the Prabhu who said today in the in the program that Guru Dev said that you will know who I really am after hundred years, you know. So just like similarly, we have got a Vaishnav in our house now. We are in presence of such a elevated personality. And at the moment, we may not even realize that how fortunate we are to have a Sadhu Sang of such a great high calibrity. And uh, but as we, you know, after maybe few years when Gurudev is no longer here in on this present earth, then we will realize that what jewel we had, you know, and um, you know, so that realization it's coming to me is like when Gurudev was not here, but we realize and we glorify him so much and we have so much inner realization of Gurudev. So I was just thinking now at the moment we have got Sripad Bhakti Vedanta Van Maharaj's association. So we should make the most of every opportunity, everything. I know we are so busy in our material life. You know, we have got many other uh, services or sevas we have to do that are more important. But we should consider that this opportunity is very, very rare, you know, to have this sadhu sang, listen to this sweet harikatha and uh, make uh, uh, our hearts so like our heart, so clean and pure so the sadhus can come and reside in our heart. So we should take this opportunity very, very seriously. And like Didi says, you know, like we should, we want to do progress in our spiritual life because the human life is so, so rare. A human life is very rare and we have got human life. And not only that, we are even more fortunate that Krishna and our Guru Parampara has given us this great opportunity to have Sadhu Sang. So for the past, since October, I am really fortunate and all of us are really fortunate that even uh, due to the despite of this corona crisis that how krishna and how guru parampara and how, how our guru parampara have been so merciful have given us this opportunity to have sadhu sang listen to the harikatha and do parikrama you know and um, do seva have this opportunity to serve gurudev so it's very great and i'm really happy that Didi and Prabhuji and uh, Vishabhanu are very, very fortunate to have Gurudev come and stay in their house. Like Prabhuji said, where Gurudev is, it's Vrindavan Dham. So now this will become a Tirth Dham, you know, and all the devotees are here as well. And so, yeah, so serving Gurudev, serving uh, Vaishnavas, uh, that is a great opportunity. And thank you for us as well. I would like to say <coughs> thank you so much from the bottom of our heart that you've invited us to your very sweet home and to your very sweet family. Uh, so thank you. And uh, there's just so much we can say about Sadhu Sang, which we have been listening to Harikatha and like Gurudev has been, I've been with Gurudev like for the past few months and I've seen him. He has been serving Radha and Krishna and Gurudev endlessly. It's just four kathas a day endlessly moving two days here then after three days moving to another house then another house another program another city like so just in within few months our gurudev is working so so hard you know it's like every drop of his blood is given to our to conditional souls like us to take us back to godhead where we belong we don't belong here this is, we are actually guests here this is not our home and uh, so we are so opportune, uh, so so f uh, fortunate to have somebody who's going to take us back to Godhead, back to home where we really belong, and where we can eternally serve our Radha, our beloved Radha and Krishna. So I just pray that 
that uh, I pray from, from the core of my heart that that I am able to serve causelessly, you know, with uh, eternally my uh, Vaishnavas and Gurus and all the devotees and one day make it back to Godhead. <coughs> Like Didi was saying the other day, that we should pray, that we should make this life in one life. Like Gora Govinda Maharaj, he said, in one life, go back to Godhead. You know, he was so strong. He said, all these attachments, cut it like a sharp knife. So, you know, we pray that, yes, we have to be so determined and uh, so much enthusiastic that we want to actually go back to God and back to our Nitya Siddha. We get our we get our bow states in this life. So we just pray. I pray deeply from my core of heart that we all all of us somehow or the other by hook or crook, just like Hari Das Thakur, by hook or crook, he never gave up Hari Nam. That we also never give up Hari Nam, never ever give up Guru, and aim for uh, chanting pure Hari Nam, and we also. Some by hook or crook, we make it at the bow stage and back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So I just want to speak two words to you. So now we are celebrating the centennial of the both gurus, of both gurus. Shri Bhagavan Goswami Shri Narayan Goswami. In this earth, everywhere, today, this Katha of Gurudeva means the transcendental life history of Gurudeva. So we're getting this good fortune to listen about him everywhere. One thing is Granta Bhagavat, another thing is Bhakta Bhagavat. The book and the devotee. Bhagavat Katha, Granta Bhagavat. So you're eager to listen about the Bhagavat Katha. But to listen about the devotee of Lord, very few people know about the, li the, the life of the devotees. Because when these great personalities are in this world, very few people know about him. They, very few, few people know who they are when they are alive. Let's say like this in this world. But when this 
चले जाते हैं उनकी गीत कथा उनकी हिंदी हिंदी But when they leave this world, then, then we glorify about their greatness, their life, who they are, their personalities, their character. And later, this all manifests in the form of a book, isn't it? If these great Mahapurushas are still in this world, nobody sees so much their greatness. Why? Because Bhagavan and his eternal associates, they are making pastimes just like a human being in this world. They sleep, they eat, they drink, I mean drink water. <laughs> Means they live just like, looks like a normal person in this world. Sometimes they f go by some suffering. And you see these, and people, they feel, is he really a sadhu? They start doubting him, you know. But, so the foolish people, they don't understand. Srimad Bhagavatam explains, Swayam Bhagavan Krishna, he gave an example to Uddhav. Imagine the full moon night, imagine the full moon and the sky, have you seen? So, this reflection of the moon is fa falling on the river, reflection of the moon. Inside the river, there are many fishes, many fish, many fish living in the water. And then these fish, when they see the reflection of the moon inside the water, they see the reflection of the moon in the water. These fish, they think that, oh, this reflection, actually they, they are thinking this one kind of fish also like us. So the fish, they start to, the fish start to play with the reflection of the moon in the water. You know, when the water moves like waves, when the waves of the water come, this reflection of the moon also moves when the waves of the river. And the fish think, is a, he's a fish also, just like me. This reflection of the moon is like a fish like me. But actually, the fish don't know that that is actually not the moon, sorry, not the fish, is the moon. And the moon is actually not even there, it's in the sky, very far away. Only the reflections inside the river. But the fish cannot actually touch that moon. It's only seeing the reflection of the moon. So in the same way, the pure devotee, he's doing this mundane behaviors in this world. These mundane behaviors, worldly behavior, when people see he, him performing the worldly behavior, some people become influenced. Some people become like start criticizing him. Some people become perplexed, like bewildered. But actually, that this pure devotee is not in this world. He's in the spiritual world, actually. So externally, he's doing pastime just like a human being. He's performing activities just like a human being. If you say, so why this pure devotee is doing like this? Because actually, in this way, he can attract the people of this world. And he can create a low kick sadhana but pretty with the people of this world, just like a family relationship with the people of this world. This is like in our family we have so much relationship with our mother, father, friends, and brother, sister. We laugh with him, we play with him, 
with them, sorry. We played with our family, we left with our family. Isn't it? So in the same way, Shuddha Bhakti, the Guru Vaishnavas, actually they're very far from you, very far from you. But you think he's very close to me. You think they're close to you. Just like the fish and the reflection of the moon in the water. This is an example given in the Bhagavatam, okay? Actually, so in Bhagavan is starting to Uddhava this. The pure devotee. Or Bhagavan also. When he comes to the society of this world, people think, oh, he's someone just like me, a living being like me. But they are very far away from this world, actually. Actually, you cannot even touch them, nothing. Just like I told, you never, the fish are never able to touch the moon because the moon is in the sky very far. But the fish think they are doing that, but they are not, actually. Actually, they are just doing something with the reflection there. <laughs> They are jumping on the reflection of the moon, like playing with the reflection of the moon. They are thinking they are doing with a big fish, jumping on a big fish, but actually it is a reflection of the moon. So Jaga Maya, she is doing all these activities. So Bhagavan, if you have this Lokik Sadhana Bhatt Priti, family relation with the pure devotee very quickly develop prem for God because the best and easy way to get this love prema is having lokik sadhaban bhat priti in the Brihad Bhagavatam Sanatana Goswami he told a lot about this you see Krishna is Parabrahma Bhagavan and he has three aspects He's no dual supreme absolute truth. He is one without a second. The monists, they think God is Brahma, only light. They see him as Brahma. The yogis, by the yoga philosophy, they understand him as like Paramatma, Supersoul. And the devotees, they see him as <coughs> directly Bhagavad Swarup. But still more, if you develop in your bhajan, you see Krishna as like, like a family member. A family member. He is the member of our family. Krishna. And in this way, by having this uh, loving relationship, just like no, no, sorry, I think saying if you have this relationship with Guru Vaishnava, but if you're a family member, then very quickly you develop prem for Krishna and you go to the spiritual world. Just like also the Vrajavas is how do they behave with Krishna? Having the Lokik Sadhbandu Bhakti, loving him as like a family member. Brahmaji is praying like this. Krishna is Parabrahma Bhagavan, he is God. He is without beginning. Krishna is the cause of all the causes without beginning. How they are always, how Krishna is always together with the Vrajavasis. Some person is serving him 
Just like, for example, Rakta Patrika serve him like a servant. Somebody with Sakya Bhav jumps on his shoulder. Somebody is making fun with him, of him or like playing with him, giving his own remnants to him. <laughs> but sometimes they don't give their remnants to Krishna. What do they do? Once Krishna was grazing cows with his friends, then he became tired. It was lunchtime. Then they came under the tree and they started taking rest. Oh, Krishna. Then all the sakas they told to Krishna, Look, my mother, she send these beautiful preparations. Let's eat here, you know, like picnic in the forest. Then all the suckers they open their tiffings, let's say like this, and they put the food on front, in front of them. All the suckers they have one goal. They are only focused in Govinda. Actually, the Vrajavasis they only want to see Krishna and they only want to speak about Krishna only. So, the Sakas open their tiffins and they put all the prasad in front of Krishna and, and the Sakas have so much love for Krishna that all Sakas were thinking, today I will feed Krishna with my own hands. So Govinda said no. One Saka told Hey Gopal Kanaya, my mother, she sent a beautiful Rasagula. So everybody started salivating because of that dribbling. Yes? Because who wouldn't dribble thinking about Rasagula? Yes. So. So, Saka told Ganey, I will feed you this Rasagula. Close your eyes, okay? Shut your eyes. So, Krishna closed his eyes. Okay, now open your mouth, Ganey. What should you do? Open your mouth and I will feed you. Okay, Ganey is small boy. Kaneya, what did he do? Open his mouth. Okay. So all the sakas started eating very quickly and they f ate all the rasagula <laughs> and they didn't give to Krishna. And then they just put a flower inside Krishna's mouth. Kaneya, eat. When Krishna saw, oh, but this is a flower when he opened his eyes. Where is the rasagula? Krishna asked. Friends of Krishna told, a demon came, you know. When Krishna heard the name of demon, like Asura, Krishna became so energetic, energetic, stimulated Krishna. Krishna was like standing up, where is that demon, where is that demon? Tell me the name of this demon. Where has he gone to? Okay, the Sakas told the name of the demon is Lobhasura. <laughs> Which name? Lobha Asura Lobhasura, the demon of the greed. Because I told the first, you know, they saw the Rasagula and they started dribbling, salivating. So, the Sakas told uh, uh, Nasura came and his name was Lobhasura. Krishna became more energetic, even more. What is that Lobasur? What is he? I will kill him. Sakas told, look. Actually, he's hidden in our bellies. What is he hidden? In our bellies. He ate and now he's sleeping. This demon. Krishna told, his, how did you enter inside your belly, your stomach? Then Sakas told everything. Lovasra means the demon of our greed, of our gluttony, gluttony, no? gluttony, desire to eat too much. So 
तो इसी प्रकार ब्रज में इंसोट कृष्ण बस फेम कृष्ण Which kind of a uh, swearing? They call him. You are cheater. You are you are thief. The bochi. These kinds of names, like calling names like this. And Krishna is eager to listen to them, calling him names. Calling names or calling off? Calling names. Yes. Calling names. Calling him names. Because actually this is so sweet. Because it's full of prema. It's time that they are calling him names. Like insulting, blaspheming Krishna. Or actually in the inner core of heart. You know, actually, it's not actually like uh, calling names. It's full of bliss inside. That's why Krishna also likes so much to listen to their words. So they have so much love. So Krishna says, the Vedas Puranas, they are making so many prayers to Krishna with all the intonation, you know, that Danudat Sarit, full of intonation and sequence of tone of the voice, the tune of how to spell the mantras. और उसी देखो कृष्ण उसी क्या दे कृष्ण तो समझ बोले सुंदर माधुर्य शब्द आदि के द्वारा एंड गोपी स्पीक्स सच ब्यूटीफुल एंड स्वीट वर्ड्स गोपीज आर कॉलिंग कृष्ण नेम्स लाइक शेयरिंग हिम एंड कृष्ण इज इगर टू लिसन बट द डेमी गॉड्स दे आर डूइंग many prayers of the vedas with full of proper tune and intonation of the words but krishna is not eager to listen to that har muraman like this verse explains exactly this brahma he saying om tadvish dadi purusham tamaham varjami govindam adi purusham But Bhagavan is not happy with this prayer. But when the gopis call him names, then Krishna is so eager to listen to them calling him names. Why? Because they have prema. In this world, who does not want love? Tell me. Everybody wants love, isn't it? Wealth, money, everything this come and go. You can eat a dry chapati, but if you have love in your house, then you'll be happy in your house, even though you're eating a dry chapati. But maybe you have so much prasadam and food, even on a golden plate. But if there's no no love and affection, then you feel so much sad. This is like this actually in this world. We stay with our family and wife and kids. What do we want actually? You go up in the morning to. You go early in the morning to work. Then you're eight or nine hours per day working. So your office, your boss, the boss in your office. Sometimes he becomes so angry with you. He's saying you're not working properly. Your boss is saying so you work working so hard. Whatever your job, and your boss comes and tells you this is not good. Why did you do like this? Blah blah blah. So sometimes you become crazy. Your mind, you become really like crazy. Really. Sometimes you think I'll give up everything and I'll go somewhere alone. I'll live alone somewhere. Sometimes you think like that. There's no human being who has never felt this disturbance in his mind. You're thinking I'm. I did so many things. I'm tired of all this. 
Like we celebrate the anniversary, marriage anniversary, but actually, how many disturbances? Okay, you are working eight or nine hours in your office, then you come back to your house. Then your wife starts. <laughs> Uh, your son didn't take properly the medicine, this, this happened, that happened. Uh, the, the, the electric the bill, these and that, the wife starts, the doctor, uh, all the problems. So when the wife starts talking, you think, I want to kill myself you, because you feel depressed, yes. <laughs> Material life is like this, yes, sometimes. <laughs> Happens or not? But so sometimes you think, I give all my blood, they sucked all my blood. My son, my daughter, my, my wife, my husband, everybody sucked my blood. But nobody is happy. Sometimes happens, you like you think like this or not. Whether you are rich or poor, sometimes you feel like this in your mind. I did so much for them, I spent so much for them and also so much blood they gave for them, but they are not happy with me. And then you become so unhappy, you become crazy. This is true. What to do? Yeah. And after some time, for some time you become renounced. But then again you come back to the samsara. So I just want to say that you can give all the blood to the material people, but still they will never be happy with you. But our child is explaining, if you give just a little bit, to God. But the one will be so pleased. What can I tell you? If you just send chant a little bit, holy names, Bhagavan will tell what service you can do for me. Come on. In some commentaries, they explain some verse very from old poet saying, Prabhu, which service I can do for you? Bhagavan says, what service you can do for me? I don't have, I don't need anything. Does not God need anything? God is complete. He's the Supreme Lord of all the universes. Sometimes we think, what can I give to Bhagavan? Then Bhagavan says, what can you give me? Okay, just listen to my kata. Bhagavan says, what? What did I say? What, what Bhagavan asked from you? That you listen to my harikata. Yes. Listen to my harikata. Nothing else. My God become so pleased. What can I tell you? So if somebody glorifies you in this world, you become so happy now if somebody glorifies you. <laughs> Externally you say, don't, don't, don't glorify me, no, no, don't praise me. But internally you're very happy. Internally you're like, yes, yeah, speak more, no. Externally, no, 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 no please don't say this, no. Medicine? <laughs> I'm not qualified for this. But internally, your heart, you're like, yes, please speak more and more. I feel so happy. Yes, glorify me, yes. Don't speak about my faults, my, my, my flaws, otherwise, I'd be angry. Just my qualities. Mm, praise me. So, Bhagavan also. Actually, Bhagavan has no flaws, no defects. If you speak about somebody in this world, always there is some fault or some flaw. Because there's no one in this world who is completely perfect. 
Is there anyone completely perfect? No. Some people always have some flaws, some defects, but Bhagavan, no, he has no fault, no flaw. Never ever. There is a difference between Jiva and Bhagavan also. Bhagavan and his qualities and his kata. He's flawless, flawless, free of defects. Only qualities are there. So Bhagavan explains, listen to my harikata. Bhagavan says, listen to my harikata. Bhagavan says, Describe my harikata. I want to listen to you talking my harikata. Just like that story in Dharaka Puri, you know. Rukmini Sattabhama Adi. The 16,108 queens. The mother of Baladeva told. You stay in Raja, so tell me some Raja kata. Because Krishna, when he was awake or sleeping, he was always calling the names of the Vrajabhas and crying. So tell me about this. Who were these Vrajabhas? Who was Nanda Maharaj? Who was Vrishabhanu Maharaj? Who was Larad, Lalita, Vishaka? Who were all of them? Tell me about them. Then Rohini Devi she told. Look, uh, if I tell you, you will not understand. Even Lakshmi couldn't understand. How will you understand? Isn't it? The, the queens of Dark, they told. Oh, Mother Rohini Devi, please tell Rajkata. And all these Vajrabhas, especially Radhanita Vishak, Nanda Jashoda, tell about them. Then Rohini Devi told, look, whenever Krishna Kata takes place, whatever Krishna Kata takes place, Krishna will come up and there. Krishna says, I'm not in the heart of the yogis, I'm not in Vaikuntha, I'm whatever, whatever my devotee glorifies me, I'm there. Why does Bhagavan stay? Where the Bhagavad Kata is going on? Like whatever they are speaking about Krishna, he comes there. So, Rohini Devi, Krishna will come and how can I speak about all this in front of him? Because if I speak about Krishna, Krishna will come. How can I speak all this Kata in front of him? So don't think, shut the door and keep someone there taking care. When Krishna Balaram arrive, I will somebody indicate to me and I will change the subject of the conversation. You know? uh, when I was speaking Harikata for the Westerners, Narup Sanatana, my Harikata is always continuous because I become absorbed in Baba. Sometimes Gurudev used to sit down. So, Mother Rahini Devi started speaking beautiful Harikata, especially about the Viraha of the Gopis. After Krishna disappeared from Rasa Lila, how Gopis felt so much separation. So Mother Rahini Devi started speaking so beautifully this Viraha Kata. And then everyone's hearts melted because of this Kata. Even Subhadra, who was also sitting, even she was also melting listening to that, listening carefully. Then Krishna Balaram came to her left and right side, sat next to her. Rohini Devi was listening to this Viraha Kata. Sorry, Rohini Devi was speaking this Viraha Kata. And then, Krishna and Balaram. 
their body melted their bodies melted and if there is some also if there is some mountain near the ocean what happens then there is some if, if there is some snow on the top of the mountain and if there is of this and also this mount this snow from the top will like melt and like coming down like all this snow coming down from the mountain you know from the top to the down in the same way nobody even saw when Krishna Balaram came and their body melted listening to the Harikata just like a candle you know you see the candle how the candle melts melts up melts down melts so the Narada Rish appeared of so the feet of Lord uh, melted. Uh, the body of Krishna was melted, his eyes was dilated. Narada Rishi started making so many prayers. Then again, Krishna, his beautiful body came back. Krishna said, Narada, ask something for me. For me. He said, Prabhu, what can I ask? If you want to give me something, then give me the blessing that is your melted form. Please when you home from the pure devotee, Shuddha Bhakti. You have to consider the ten offenses of the holy names. Which, what, do you say, what do you have to consider? The ten offenses of Nama Parad. Ten Nama Parads. Otherwise, holy names will not appear to you. Isn't it? So always you chant sometimes Namabhasana. Okay, you chant the 64 rounds. Means you chanted 64 rounds of Nama Aparada. Because the first stage of the Bada Jiva is chanting Nama Aparada, yes. Nama Abhasa is very rare. So always Nama Aparada, sometimes Nama Abhasa. All these are obstacles for Krishna Bhajan. Nama Parada, Nama Bas. But you listen to Harikata. Harikata is Sakshat directly. Sri Hari, Shabda Brahma, transcendental sound. Bon Mai Murti. Sound incarnation of Lord. Sound incarnation. Ban Moi Murti. Shabda Brahma means God manifests directly in the form of transcendental sounds. So that's why Bhagavad Kata is called Ban Moi Murti. Sound incarnation. So when we speak the Kata, the Shabda Brahma which comes from the mouth of the pure devotee is Ban Moi Murti. The sound incarnation of Lord. Whenever Shuddha Bhakta speaks Harikata, that place is Vrindavan. Where the Vaishnavas are, that place is Vrindavan. Vrindavan may manifest in your house. If somebody is doing bhajan in your house, in the house, that house is not a house. It's Goloka Vrindavan. So we want to go to Goloka Vrindavan. You want to go to Vrindavan? Huh? Have you been to Vrindavan? No. Oh, but our house is Vrindavan. Now you're sitting in Vrindavan already. Your house has become already Goloka Vrindavanam. Goloka Vrindavanam manifesting in your heart, in your, in your house, sorry. 
because when Shuddha Bhakti speaks Harikatha, he's speaking about Radha Govinda. He's, and whatever he speaks is directly God there in his speech. Bhagavad Swarup. But because people of gross intelligence, they don't understand. <laughs> Think so? He's speaking about things, of mundane things, things about my house. No, he's talking about Bhagavan. He's speaking about the devotees. Because we we'll actually we we'll understand more the kata if we realize more the harikata if there is some similarity with us. That's why God also. Mm, manifest as like a human being and also making pastimes. Actually, God knows everything, but He's making pastimes as like a human being. Narada told to Judiciary, you are so fortunate. They were Grihastas, who? Pandavas, five Pandavas. But look, Narada is saying, Masadit Sakshat. Gurang Prabrahma. Manushalika. Means that Supreme Lord, which is so confidential. Today, this so confidential God, He's just like a human being in your house. Another is told, Do you see, you think He's an ordinary human being, but He's not an ordinary human being. You think He's your friend, but He's not your friend. He's Parabrahma Bhagavan. He's Atmaram Aptakam. How is he? Self-satisfied and fulfill all his desires. All his desires are already satisfied. His Atmaram and Aptakam. The verse of the Bhagavatam. Atmaram Aptakam Purush. Kintu dekho aapke ghar mein Guram Prabrahma Loka. This Parabrahma Bhagavan came in your house, how? Just like ordinary human being. Why God is staying in a human being form? To accept service, nothing else. To accept service. He's eager. When the devotees will serve to me, nothing else. When they will glorify to me, and I'll listen to this. Whatever Bhagavad Gita is happening, Swayam Bhagavan, he sits there. Have you seen that image? Who has seen of Surdas? So he was blind like from his eyes. Suradas was like a bina. Some instrument he was playing doing kirtan. And Gopal himself to listen for, to his kirtan. Gopal came and said, sit down, we used to sit down. Have you seen this picture? Some painting. The absorbed in bhav. So Bhagavan sa says, what can you do for me? What can you give to me? Just listen to my harikata. What should you do? Just listen to my harikata. And this will deliver you, will make you be delivered from this material world. So we're listening about Guru Vaishnavas. They come to us or not? Guru Vaishnavas, they also come. Because this is the rule. Whenever we speak about Bhagavan, Bhagavan comes. And if you speak about Guru, also Gurudev comes there. 
भगवान की कथा तो कीर्तन भगवत कथा एंड लिसन टू हिज कथा नौ सौ पीछे तब तुम्हारी जिया Then your tongue will be then will be successful. You having a tongue. If you didn't listen Bhagavad Gita, next life not get ears. Foolish! I give you ears, but you didn't listen Hari Gita. You didn't listen to my Gita. So what is the use of having ears? Some jeevas they don't have ears. Some people don't have tongue. Why? Bhagavan is saying, I, you didn't accept my remnants. Although I tried to give you my remnants, Prashad, you didn't accept. So next life, I'm not giving you tongue. Some people are blind, yeah, because God gave you eyes, but you're not having consolation. Anyway, you're not using your eyes for having darshan of Lord. Shmasarad is saying, "What is the fruit of having eyes?" The fruit of having eyes is only seen in the beautiful form of Krishna. When Krishna goes for cow grazing and comes back three o'clock, three at three thirty. And the gopis are so eager to see Krishna. The gopis are so eager to see Krishna in this moment. They come to the roof of their houses. They, all of them, they give up all their shyness. Shyness of from the superiors or from mother-in-law or father-in-law. Anyway, the gopis they run away. They just want to see Krishna. The gopis they are trying to be patient. So first they see that dust coming. You know the dust from so much dust in the air. So the dust from the hoof of the cow cows on the air, and Braja becomes full of dust. So gopis they oh Krishna is not here yet. Where is he? And after some time. They see the sakas coming, and Gopis think, "Oh, Krishna and Govind is coming." But no, sakas went by, oh, by, but Krishna was not there. Then I think Gopis also like a little bit fainted, and where is Krishna? And then they see, "Oh, Govind is coming." He's holding some friend. How can we see him? I was not able to see Krishna. The, what is the speciality of gopis? They feel so blessed seeing having the darshan of Dhir Lalita Naika Krishna. How many qualities of Dhir Lalita Naika? Four. First. His body is so beautiful, transcendental, and very young and Navayan Evan Mandrup means each second Krishna is more beautiful, more fresh, more young and beautiful. Second quality of Dhiradita Naika. He is always free of worries. Nishchintata. Krishna has no worries at all. Now, which cow is sick? Do you think Krishna is thinking about which cow is sick or not? Krishna is a prince, Rajkumar. So he just eats, sleeps. He doesn't care about it. Just like somebody in the told in the Hari Kata, sometimes Guru Deva used to say, "You're not giving attention. You're all princes." Because your father is very rich. So you're just eating, sleeping, and relaxing. So Krishna, actually, is not king. Who is the king of Raja? Is Nanda Maharaj. So Krishna is not the king. Krishna is the prince. Vishwanath Maharaj. Or Nanda Maharaj is the king of Raja, and Krishna is the Rajaputra. 
He's the prince, so he has no worries. This year they'll be uh, harvesting or not. How many cows do we have? Is any cow sick or? The prince doesn't know anything. Just sleep, drink, and relax. In Kali Yuga also. Bhagavan also told us, okay, eat, sleep, and relax, but listen to my Harikata. Just listen to my Harikata in Kali Yuga. And then Bhagavan will be pleased with you. And in the end, Bhagavan will. Do so many things. So many things to you. And Krishna will give you so many things to you. Because God's heart is so generous, He's so broad minded. Those who are generous, they like sing, take, take, they give everything. <coughs> So by listening about God and His devotees, God becomes so pleased. Now we're celebrating the centennial of Guru Deva. What is the meaning of celebrating centennial? Why we're celebrating? To speak about Guru Deva and His life history, so that everybody can listen to it. Maybe when Guru Deva was alive, maybe did some offense to him. Sometimes happens because. We are human beings, so sometimes we commit some offense to his lotus feet. Which offense? Maybe we were thinking he was ordinary human being and maybe did something like, or said something here and there. Like today some devotee was saying, or yesterday, they told. Ah, when Gurudev was in Mathura, I think he did it before, they told. Every day Gurudev used to wake up early in the morning and he used to go for a morning walk in the park near to our temple there is a, a school and behind the school there is a field now he went to the fields for morning walk so, so the boys, they were playing cricket, and they told, why this Baba of Guriyamat is coming here to our field of cricket? We will play cricket, but this Baba is coming in the middle and walking here. Maybe our, the ball of cricket will hit his body. So sometimes these boys were saying, Babaji, why do you come here? You can go walk in another place. <laughs> so Gurudeva left that place and he went to another place. So 20 years passed, one day. This person came to this Harikata from Gurudeva. Then Gurudeva told Gurudeva recognized him. Look, 20 years ago, you sent me off your field of cricket. 20 years ago. So now I'm not giving you any trouble. I don't want to give you any trouble. Huh? Gurudeva told to him, and he was ashamed. He understood. 20 years ago, I told the saint, ah, Babaji, don't walk here. We are playing cricket. You are disturbing our play, our match. So Gurudeva told later to him, Can I sit here now? <laughs> Gurudeva told, was telling to him, I can sit here, here? I'm not disturbing you? And this person was so ashamed. He said, Maharaj, at that time I was so young, like I was a young boy. I for even forgot. But how did you remember that I told you that at that time? So crying, crying, he took the Gurudev's feet. I didn't understand that you were a saint at that time. I thought you were any beggar living in the temple. But now I understood how you're a great saint. Maharaj, will you forgive me? Crying, he was crying. He was holding the feet of Gurudeva and crying. 
Gurudev said, okay, I'll forgive all your offenses. Then Gurudev said, okay, I'll give you Haridam Diksha. Then Gurudev gave him Haridam Diksha. All his offenses were destroyed. But how is your offense destroyed if you take Harinam and Diksha? Because when the Guru accepts a disciple, the person becomes like his son. So the Guru becomes like the father of the disciple. So the father, they don't see the faults of their sons. Parents, they don't see the faults of their disciples. The son can do anything, can do everything. You know, sometimes the kid becomes so angry and beating his own mother. Isn't it? You can see a small kid. Sometimes he's even pulling the head of, hair of the mother and trying to beat the mother. The parents, the mother and father, they will be... See, his the fault of the kids? No. Of the children. They will not see the fault of the children, even though maybe the child is beating the mother. So when you take Harnam and Diksha from the Guru, all your offenses are destroyed. All the apparatus. Because Gurudev is just like, like a father and disciple like a son. Just like the parents never take the faults of their children. Understand? So the glories of Bhagavan and the devotees, we must listen to this and then we will feel so much enthusiasm. Hare Krishna, Surprise, I was so late. Then I had 10 p.m. already. So I'll take Prashad, take rest. What is this book? It's not a book, just a notebook. Okay. Gurudev, you tell me about the four qualifications of Dirlalita Nayak. No, no, I am not. No, I So, the Shintata for your worries, but he has Pato, expert in speaking. Presi was controlled by his beloved Navatarunya, always newly ever fresh form. Broke also yours. I have in my house. 